This is what God spoke to me. I'm going to read some things. A good Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. A good name is better than a fine perfume, and the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Why? Because you didn't do anything when you were born. When you die, it's judgment and going into living in eternity with Christ. So that's why he said the day of death is better than one's birth because your life is blank when you're born. It's completed when you die. It is better to go to house of mourning than go to a house of feasting since that is the end of all mankind and living should take it to heart. Grief is better than laughter for when a face is sad, a heart may be glad. So I think what he's talking about here and i'm not going to go through the entire chapters but what he's saying is be sober-minded don't be a damn fool uh you know ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8 the end of a matter is better than its beginning a patient spirit is better than a proud spirit don't let your spirit rush to be angry angry for anger abides in the hearts of fools, in the hearts of fools. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. 7, verse 15. I have seen everything. Someone righteous perishes in spite of his righteousness, and someone wicked lives long. Someone wicked lives long in spite of his evil. Don't be excessively righteous and don't be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? The reason why people who are evil live longer is because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should all come to repentance. Because once you die, it's eternal. And time is running out. So when you have a longer life, God is giving you mercy. If you're an evil person, God is giving you mercy to repent. Because God doesn't want to send you send your soul to hell. And like again, if you've seen in my videos, hell is a real place. Make the most of your time. Make the most of every moment. Because it's the only commodity which you can never buy back. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20. There is no one righteous on earth. Who does good and never sins? 21. Don't pay attention to everything people say, or may you or you may hear your servants cursing you. For in your heart you know that many times you you yourself has cursed others. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. And I find and I find more bitter than, than death. The woman who was a trap. Her heart a net and her hands chains. The one who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner will be captured by her. You know, the Bible talks about that in Proverbs, that the cords of sin will hold him fast. I think it's Proverbs chapter 7. Um, okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse is 6. For every activity there is a right time and procedure, even though the person's troubles are heavy on him. We're in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Chapter chapter 8, verse 8. No one has authority over the over the wind to restrain it, and there is no authority over the day of death. So what does that mean? That means you don't know the day that you're going to die. You don't know. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 10. In such circumstances I saw the wicked buried, they came and went from the holy place where they were praised in the city where they did those things. This tool is, is futile because sentence against an evil act is not carried out quickly. The heart of people is filled with the desire to commit evil. So again, basically he was talking about there's nobody righteous. Like your acts of righteousness for, for, for God are like filthy rags. And there's a different version that says, that your righteousness, acts of righteousness, are like, like, a, like a tampon, like a used tampon in the eyes of God. It's like they're repulsive. That's why God can only look at you through his blood of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, 
who, get, who saved us. He saved us all from hell. But we have to live for him and we have to make a decision that we're going to constantly stay in his word every single day because we, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. 8 verse 14. This, this is very interesting one here. 8, Ecclesiastic 8 verse 14. There is futility that is done on the earth. There are righteous people who get, who get what the actions of the wicked deserve. And there are wicked people who get what the actions of the righteous deserve. I say this too is futile. So in this life, there is an injustice. There is many injustices that are done on this in this life. And it go, all goes on the bill. See, the thing about God is he's completely just, perfectly just. There is no injustice in him. It just goes on the bill. So what happens is when you die, there will be an account and you'll have to pay that price. And you won't be able to pay it, so you'll go to hell. But thank God, Yeshua, he said, look, I already paid it. And if you accept his sacrifice... And you turn and you repent of your sins and you say, look, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to live for you. Then there is salvation for you. And many, again, I can't stress it enough. Many people think they're going to go to heaven, but they're not going to go to heaven. And that's why we, we, we must be sober minded. We must be vigilant for the enemy, the devil. He, he roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may whom he may devour but a lot of these times these are these are our, our unmet needs our unmet sins that we don't give to god because we don't spend time in the word of god so then what happens is it's like a seed and seed and when it comes forth it germinates and and brings forth into action and then that action when it's full grown it becomes a full grown grown sin and then you take that action and that's why it's so critical that you have to feed your spirit in the word. Ecclesiastes, spend time every day. This is this is this is just I'm sharing you from my morning, my morning my morning prayer and meditation when I'm spending time in the Word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter nine verse one. Again, I, I I took all this to heart and I explained it all. The righteous, the wise, and their works are in God's hands. People don't know whether whether to expect love or hate. Everything lies ahead of them. Everything is the same for everyone. There was one one fate for the righteous and the wicked, for the good and the bad, for the clean and the unclean, for the one who sacrifices and the one who does not sacrifice. So basically what he's saying is we're all going to die. There is only one fate for the righteous and the wicked, for the good and the unclean. There's only one fate. Only one thing is going to happen. We're all going to have to face that death, that death day. In judgment and again I, I like to put this here because time is running out so I'll put this in the background so you can see it uh, this one I like <laughs> uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 there is hope for whoever is joined with all the living since a live dog is better than a dead lion dead lion for the living know that they will die but the wet, the dead don't know anything. There is no longer a reward for them because their memory of them is forgotten. So each day that God gives you is a day to repent. Each day that God gives you is a way to God. Cleanse my heart. I say, I say, I would I would encourage you in this prayer and say, Oh God, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and create a willing to spirit, willing spirit to sustain me. And listen, I say I pray the salvation prayer almost every day because I say, God, don't for whatever happens. Do not send me my soul to hell, eternal hell, because I'll tell you, it is it is a place you want to be in holy reverence and fear of God. And your life has to be holy reverence. You don't want to be walking around with arrogance because pride. See, a lot of people don't know the verse. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Understand that. Don't get it twisted. Pride goes before destruction. It doesn't say pride goes before a fall. It goes before destruction. A haughty spirit goes before a fall. What does it mean to be haughty? That means to be you're walking around with your entitlement, this arrogance. 
And let me tell you, there's, there's a great humbling coming. There is a great humbling coming. And it's going to start in the house of God. It's going to start in the house of God. This is why I, I, I said, I'm, I, I say I walk humbly before God. I, I, and, and, you know, again, this is not, I'm not saying that I have attained it, the righteousness, but I'm seeking after it every single day. And that's how it purifies it. We got to get in this. We got to feed your spirit, man. So again, uh, I can't stress this enough. This is important. This has got to be the foundation. It is the reading of the word and prayer and seeking God. Okay, uh, we're going to go in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 16. And I said, wisdom is better than strength, but the wisdom of the poor man is despised and his words are not heeded. Verse 18, wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner can destroy much good. So people don't listen to poor, like most people don't listen to poor people, even though they may have some wisdom in what they're saying. But they're not going to listen to them. Why? Because they're broke. They don't. Nobody wants to listen. Nobody. They'll. They'll. They'll judge you and they'll do stuff like that. And that's just the way it is. But a poor man is despised, and his words are not heeded. But what does he say? He says, "Better wisdom is better than strength." So you can be strong, and and fail. But if you're wise, that's where the true strength lies in. So it's better better a patient warrior than a than a, than a, than a, than a um, an attacker, someone who wants to just destroy everything. It's better to be patient. Sometimes timing, and that's one thing, is because I am not a patient man. But sometimes your timing uh, is wrong, and you have to be able to just say, okay, I need to wait for the right time to speak the right words. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse one. Dead flies make a perfume's oil ferment and stink, so the little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. If I had some beautiful, expensive oil, yet I had some dead flies in it, you wouldn't want it. But yet this, most of it is just beautiful, expensive oil. And like it is, if you're a wise person, don't act like a, like a fool. Because a little bit of that folly People will, will judge you. They're not going to listen to you. Okay, we're going to wrap up here. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 12. The words from the, mouth, from the mouth of the wise are gracious, but the lips of a fool consume him. Verse 18. Because of laziness, the roof caves in, and because of negligent hands, the house le leaks. And verse 20. Do not curse the king even in your thoughts, and do not curse a rich person even in your bedroom. So let's go back to 10 verse 18, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18. This is about taking care of your house, okay? Because of laziness, the roof caves in. And because of negligent hands, the house leaks. Your house is your body, your mind, your soul. You've got to take care of your house because your house is where the Holy Spirit lives within you. You know that the Ruach HaKodesh you accept God's Holy Spirit living within you. You have to take care of it and diligently cleanse your thoughts, cleanse your mind. It says, do not curse the king even in your thoughts. Don't curse anyone even in your thoughts. God, God knows your thoughts. God knows your heart. And more importantly, God knows your intention. So, uh, again, you see a girl and guys, a lot of guys think like this. They want to have sex with them. God knows your intention. So understand that. And maybe she might, the girl, the girl, they might pick up the intention and that might repel them away. But understand your thoughts are, are always before God. The, that's why I said the prayer is may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, the Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Knowing that your thoughts need to be pure before God is an important part of daily, daily, don't think you're arrogant and prideful enough to think you don't need to read your Bible every day because you do. And if you think that you're going to be able to do it by yourself, you will fail, you will fall, and you will go to hell. So I'm just telling you that uh, it's hard out here. It's, it's hard out here when you're among such, there's going to be a lot of evil coming back. But 
the lines are clearly going to be drawn. The ones that are really for God and the ones are, are lovers of the world and lovers of the flesh and seeking the pride of life. For these are things that God does not want. It's you've got to be, you've got to, you can't be Mickey Mouse. Again, I call it Mickey Mouse Christianity. Anyway, so that's it. That's my video. Take care. I'll be putting out my videos periodically. It will not be every day. I just want to be honest. I'm not going to do this every day. Uh, I'll do it at least two to three times a week. And I think that a man should be um, committed to his word. And anyway, so that's my commitment to you. I appreciate everybody here that watches my channel. And uh, feel free to leave a comment if you agree or disagree. And whatever it is, just stay in the word of God.